This application is magic buttons and you can find it in the Quick Base Exchange. It's meant as a, an example of all the different kinds of things you can do with graphics, buttons, formulas, and you'll find a whole bunch of graphics that are right under this button right here. Uh, this is where we host a whole bunch of graphics. There's 2,500 different graphics here, 500 in, in a couple of different sizes, as you'll see up above here. And as you click into these, you'll find links that you can use inside your QuickBase application just by right-clicking and copying the link address. So those are uh, available for you to be able to use inside your QuickBase application. Now this is a project management application, but it's only a container. You'll see down below here, there's a link for um, a, an individual project, but all that is there for is to get you onto one of the project pages because inside each one of the pages is hosted a bunch of different buttons. For instance, this first column over on the left-hand side is a formula URL field. Uh, and if you want to know how that button does something, you can just right-click and view the, the code that's inside it. Let's go back. If you uh, like these colored buttons, these first four buttons are QuickBase uh, style, I guess you could say. Uh, the class is a QuickBase style. I'm going to right click. This is a formula text field. And if you edit the field properties of that, you can see how this was put together and how it was able to hyperlink to um, perform the, the same kind of function as the formula URL button. As you move over to the right, you'll you'll find there's a also a formula text field that is used for graphics. And if you right click on that one, you'll find that it'll re uh, reflect one of the images that we looked at just a second ago when I went out and showed you all those graphics that we host for you. Um, as you work with QuickBase, you'll find that you, when you press these buttons, that the status will reflect the change of what this is trying to do. Like change the status to complete and then display the record. If I click on that, you'll see that it now goes to completed. So that's uh, the intent of the buttons is to describe what it is it's going to do. And, and hopefully you'll find the action that you're looking for. Here's, here's a blue checkbox here. Let's click on it. And you can see it checks the checkbox. Now, there's a, uh, a uh, gold-colored one here. If I click on that, notice it changed to green. So there's a bunch of different things that you can do uh, as you walk down and look at the, uh, the individual uh, formulas. Pr press to pop up an alert. Sometimes you want to put that in a formula if there's an exception to your request. Uh, check and uncheck checkboxes. Uh, there's one down here. Uh, change the status to completed and then return. Well, we've already got the status to completed and that's that, that's okay. But I was looking for the one that posts the uh, information to a child record. Let's see here. And I want to take a snapshot. There it is. Create a project snapshot and then return. Okay, that's number 9A, right? Over here, there's a table called Project Snapshots. And there aren't any records in there. But let's go back and we'll go back to 9A and we'll press this button. Well, it doesn't look like anything happened, but if I come over here, you'll see that this record has been posted with the date created, who the owner is, all of that kind of information has been posted over here. So if you want to know how to use that particular button to do that kind of thing, you can. You can just right click on it. Now, I'm scrolling up and down, up and down, and up and down. Some of these functions in here are really unique. Look at the word return, and I probably should make that a little more prominent, but if I edit this, uh, you'll see the way the the uh, formula is put together, and it includes this at the end here. And what it does is, if you're on a form in edit mode and you want to edit a record and you use this button, it'll edit the record. But where does it go after? We're all used to it going to the displayed version of the record, for instance. But uh, maybe you want it to go back to a report that you might have launched this button on. And that's exactly what this, this does. So there's, this is a really wonderful uh, addition. So if you're on a form, it takes you back to the form. If you're on edit, it'll take you back to edit. If you're halfway down the page, it'll take you halfway down the page. If you're on a dashboard, it'll take you back to the dashboard. So, so you can find uh, some of those in here. Now, 
I'm going to come back out here because this has many sections to it. Let me collapse this first section. Now, there, here are a bunch of functions that people like to use, like save, save and add another, cancel, delete, clear, clear the flags, uh, import, export. There's a bunch of things like that. I might caution you, QuickBase uses these functions, and they're not meant to be uh, leveraged and used by end users. But if you right-click, you'll see that there's some internal things like uh, do save add. Now, it's not likely in the near term, but there is always the possibility that QuickBase will change the uh, code because we evolve the product all the time. So just uh, to be aware um, that those could possibly change. Let's collapse this one. We'll go down. Uh, graphics, there's another link to those uh, 2,500 graphics. There are 500 times five sizes or four sizes there. Uh, down below here are some different ways to do the buttons. Now you saw some of these colored buttons up above. If I right click on this, for instance, and edit the field properties, you can see that it's using this thing called class, Vibrant Primary. So there are four of these. There's Vibrant Danger, Success, Primary, and Snowy. And if you use these, uh, then uh, you're limited to that, that color palette. But over on the left-hand side, what you'll find is, and these happen to be the uh, colors for Google, the Google Red, Google Green. So uh, where did I find them? I found them out under this link here to w3schools.com. And if you clicked on that, you'll find a whole bunch of different brands for uh, Facebook, for Twitter, and all the other colors uh, for common applications you might use on, online. But how do we get these colors to show up like this? If I right-click and edit the field properties of this, you'll, uh, you'll see that I'm defining the color, the background color. I'm setting a variable for text color. And when I want to use the what that color is, it's BG color. You can see I just put a dollar sign in front of this, and uh, it pulls that variable into the spot where it would be, so I don't have to keep um, changing it. And there's only one place you have to change that, which is great. Uh, this is constructing, instead of a, uh, a, a button or a graphic, this is actually using style to define what that's going to look like. Uh, you can find information uh, uh, about the, uh, creating these buttons out at the, on the Button Factory, and uh, that's a, uh, a good resource for defining a, a, the buttons look and feel that you want to use. So that's, a, uh, that's one of them. Um, there are the other colors are listed there as well. All right, let's collapse that section and move down a little bit. Workflow and approval. Uh, if I edit this record right now, uh, you can see that my name is in here, Kirk Tracy. And if I want to send this to the sales manager, it brings a graphic. It actually turns on a graphic. There's a graphic here that says if this, the value of this multiple choice field is sent to sales, light up, else be extinguished, be null. Um, and what that does is, is that it gives you a handy way of designating where you want to send these. Uh, this will trigger off an email notification to this person, and if you approve this eventually, um, all the workflow of around who did it and when, uh, you'll, you'll see here, is date stamped of what the activity is that happened and the person that approved it. Let's uh, scroll down a little bit further. And uh, I'm getting an email that's just come in and here's the uh, here's the email that I just got and where are you where are you where are you it's way down here there it is so my email sends me in red the things that have changed so I can click on the link and then uh, it brings us back into QuickBase where another person can approve something okay this is uh, around Skype calling if you use Skype uh, and I I've got a phone number up here 631-924-0517. Um, if I um, click on this, it'll say, hey, you do not have your Skype turned on. So it's going to ask me if I want to log into Skype. Yes. And are you going to call this number? And I'll say sure. And in the background, you'll probably hear the, the, the line ringing here. Isn't it nice and quiet? Anyway, it's, it's ringing by phone there. Let me hang up this line. You can also do it by username. And you can see there's the uh, username. So a bunch of different ways to use telephone dialing in QuickBase. 
Uh, down below here, let me edit this for just a second. So here we've got a project and uh, you can see we've got a completed item here. Let's say I was in progress. Uh, it's saying I'm 131 um, days past this date right here or uh, the estimated end date. Excuse me, we're green lighted until then. Uh, if this was, let's say, the first of the year, you would see I was 112 days overdue. So this is uh, a kind of a, a handy thing to do and you can make it do any text that you want to. I'm just editing the field properties here. And you can see uh, how it's constructed up here. And we're setting uh, a variable for the, the red one, the green, the yellow, and the gray. And you can see that uh, you've got a little pound here. I'm doing the green one, I'm doing the red one, the yellow one, and the gray one. So all of those are described. And how they're displayed on the button is listed right here between this and this. That is the place that defines uh, the number and then the text that says days overdue. Okay, let's get out of here. Uh, that's, a, that's a handy thing to do. Let's collapse this section. We'll move down a little bit. Template selector. Now we've got a bunch of tasks in here already and we've all had projects to do that have the same kind of steps to be performed. I'm going to um, uh, stay on this page. I'm going to go to more and delete all the records that are a part of this. Let me delete them and then close. And, uh, and then I'm going to refresh the page. Reload the page. There we go. And look down below. There are no more tasks. Okay. But I do want to add some uh, marketing projects uh, tasks. So I'm going to make that selection and click on import. And now what we've got is those 18 tasks. There you go. 18 tasks that are common to that template type. If you've ever used the from the home page, if you want to know where to find the information about that, um, under app management from the home page, hitting settings, you'll find something that says copy master and detail records, which allows you to say, gee, I want to do this against the project table. And I'd really like to use the uh, project's name, but I always want to import from a particular one. And then it says, well, why don't you choose that one? And so I might use a, a template like, like that, for instance. I've created a project template that has all the tasks. I've put the word template inside it. So I'll say, OK. And, uh, and then, well, what do you want to do? And, and this will be a, I'm going to just call this demo so we can find it again. And I'll say create the button. So we'll create the button, go back to the field list. And uh, do you want to add it to the form? And I'll say, no, I'm not going to add it to the form. Uh, but what happens is, let's go back into uh, the record we were just looking in. So we've got this uh, button here, and pretend this is the button. It looks just like this. Uh, it creates this button. Now usually what happens is there's a number in here for the project identifier, the project ID, and it might be 6 or 7 or 10 or 57 or something like that. So if you ever press this button, it'll go and find that template, which is number 57, and copy all the detail records for your project. Which is, which is really the intent. But instead of using uh, project number six over and over and over again, you can put a multiple choice field here, that template selector. And let's go back, exit the settings. That's what this is here. If I right click on this and edit the field properties, you're gonna notice that this is just a numeric field with, from a list. And um, QuickBase does not pay attention to the text. So we've got a record ID 9, we have record ID 13, we have record ID 14. Each one of them have, have a template of, of tasks associated with them. So we're actually taking what used to be a very stale or stagnant uh, button that says do this, and we're having it be driven by this template selector over here. So you can make a whole bunch of templates and then call on them on demand. Okay, that uh, pretty much winds up the 
the feature functionality that's in here right at this time. Uh, you'll find many um, Easter eggs in here that you'll uh, um, you, you may find use for. Um, and we update it all the time, so you might pull it out and get a new copy of it about every month or so and, and see what else has been added to it.